Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Said video today is the much anticipated Corsair H100i review. Now, it, it is uh, part of the, uh, the new kind of like Corsair uh, eye range. We've got PSUs out now with the eyes. It's all to do with the Corsair Digital Link software. But something I do want to say straight away, so you have a look in the uh, description underneath the video. For everybody in the UK, there is a special price link. It's the first time I've done this. I went and spoke to the boys at Special Tech, uh, and you can get the H100i and a set of the Quiet Edition fans, because obviously I'm a silence freak. So we've put the SP120 Quiet Edition fans in, uh, and you can get both for 100 quid. Now the H100i itself is you know, coming in uh, around the and above the £90 mark. It's 89.99 at Special Tech. But you can get the, uh, uh, and the fans, again, they're sort of 18 to 21 quid for a set of two. But you can get one of these and two of the SP120 Quiet Editions for 100 quid. And I'll put the link underneath. So that's a special TTL bundle. But anyway, we will crack on with this. Um, so let's get the box open. And the thing is, is I've yet to use this. I'll get this all out either, because I've been extra, extra patient. So there we go. Just a bit of polystyrene. We'll bin that off underneath. First thing that we're met with is uh, the the manual, giving you all the gump for about how to fit it, how to do it properly, what you should get in there, all that kind of stuff. So we'll put that on the floor, mainly because I'm a man, and that's what we do. Uh, right, at the back we have uh, an AMD um, mount, then we're met with the, the Intel mount. Now the, the mount on these are slightly different in that you have to put this Intel mount over the top of the pump now, but the, the back plate there will fit all the major sockets, all the major sockets you'll need it to anyway. And then we have a cable, now we'll, we will talk about these later, but essentially what these are Come on, come on, come on. Right, this is the uh, cable for the Corsair Link. And you can see you've got like a mini USB on this end and then an internal USB on this end. And we will discuss how this all connects up and all that kind of stuff. And then we've also got a pair of fan cables. Now, these uh, click into the main pump unit, as you again, you will see in a moment. Uh, but they have two fan connections on each end, so it's capable of powering four fans in total. So that would obviously work out to be push-pull. And then we have a, a bag of fittings. Obviously, we're always going to need them. I'm going to start putting this back in. Then we have two fans, which I will talk about in depth with you in a minute. So I'll get one out. Now, these are the new style fans. They are based on the uh, SP, the static pressure fans and again i will talk to you about these in depth in a minute because i have one of the other sp fans there to the side but the main bit that we need to get out is the uh main unit itself oh crikey so the main unit itself. Now the first thing to note, which is new, uh, is this. Now if I bring it up for you to have a close look. That, my boys, is a SATA power connector. Now straight away, there's gonna be people out there going, why the bloody hell would you want a SATA power connector? Well, how many times, now I know there's gonna be hundreds of you out there that have done it, how many of you out there, when you first bought a H100, for instance, had to fit a Molex cable just to power your H100? We've all got hard drives in our rigs. Molex are slowly starting to die out. They're even starting to put SATA power connectors on motherboards rather than Molex connectors or PCI connectors even. So if you've got, a, everyone's gonna have a hard drive in their rig anyway, then pretty much all of them now are um, SATA. If you're still running a, a hard drive that you need a Molex to plug into, then you have some problems, boy. Um, 
So uh, if you've got one of those in, you're going to have one of these in there as well. Maybe we'll end up seeing SATA power extenders and stuff in the, in the not too distant future, but that is why they've done that. Now, let's have a ganders. What I'm going to do is try my best to bring you in for a closer look. Whee! And then we can have a, a good look together. Now you can see the top. Uh, it has got a sticky film over the top of it at the moment, which uh, we might as well pull off because I'm going to be using this for a little while. So we've got that. Now if we go around this side, you can see at the top there, that's the SATA, uh, SATA, the <laughs> SATA on the brain now, that's the little mini USB thing that I showed you before, which goes to the, um, uh, the internal USB connector. But then just underneath, there is another link connector. And this is so that, for instance, say, if you've got an AXI um, power supply, they've got connectors on that are meant to go up to um, the course air link things anyway. But you can plug your power supply directly into this, and the H100 acts like a hub. So that then you are uh, basically you plug the power supply di directly into this, and then you just make the one connection to your uh, USB. Um, so it saves on cabling. One thing I will say with these type of things, try and send them up round the back of your motherboard. Don't start dangling all this stuff straight down the motherboard and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. Now this little circly thing, I've already had a couple of people say, oh the bloody hell's that? Well, they don't actually tell you, but I would hazard a guess, and it would be a poorly educated guess, that that is how they filled it up when they built it. Round here, there's the connectors uh, for the fans. So you plug those in, and then what I would do is, like I said, uh, plug your fan, uh, put the fan connectors in, disappear that up round the back of your motherboard. Oh, come on, Thomas. Right, so there's your fan connectors. And then what I would do is put your fan connectors in, and then run that up round the back of your motherboard. Have all your fans and stuff connected out of the way. You want your, the inside, the main chamber of your rig, to look as tidy as possible, or at least that's how I build mine. And then at the side, we have the, the hoses. They've changed the hose, now it's a rubber hose. I actually was quite the fan of the old plastic stuff. Um, so this is gonna take a little bit of getting used to to me, because I have to admit, I know the, the hose, the reason why they've done it is the, the, the hose diameter, internal and external, is bigger, to allow better flow. So uh, better flow, better performance, can't necessarily be a bad thing, can it? But the rubberness of them makes me think of the, um, like the, uh, the Antec coolers and stuff like that, which are obviously horrific. I don't like them at all. Um, so, but I suppose where it's thicker, it's quite nice. But anyway, other things to talk about while we've got this in front of us are, uh, in the Corsair Link software, you can uh, control your fans but at the same time, the little light behind the Corsair doofer now is um, RGB. So by that, I mean when you get the Corsair Link software all set up, which I'll show you in a bit, uh, you can change the colour of this, which is quite cool. Um, and obviously where the software uh, is on, you know, is actually in your rig, you can change your fan speeds just by changing that. Whereas before with the old H100, you used to have to press that button on the front and I, I saw that as being pointless. I used to just manually set the fans and I just have them running you know, at that speed all the time. But with this, with that little bit of software, as long as you can make it tidy, that's gonna be the crucial thing. You, with those, you will be able to uh, use that bit of software and set them that way. Now, uh, as far as changes are concerned, we've spoken about a lot there. It does still come with uh, thermal paste on the bottom but what they've done is the cold plate, which is the copper bit, which basically the cold plate is the bit that the water goes through with all the fins and stuff. They have changed that internally as well. There's been some pump tweaks. They've also made some changes uh, because the old H100 had a problem if your power supply delivered more than 12.3 volts on the Molex. Some power supplies are capable of doing that. Some didn't. Most of it, you know, some of them are like 12. Uh, 0 0.1, 12.125, some of them did go up to 12.3 and if your power supply pushed out 12.3 the pump uh, could rattle because it was making the pump spin that little bit too fast on the bearing. Um, so this uh, has all, uh, they fixed all of those uh, issues with this. Um, it's actually got a better bearing in there as well I'm told but there are there have been pump changes and um, 
coal block changer, which is, like I said, is the copper kind of water block bit on the very bottom. As far as I'm aware, the radiator has stayed exactly the same. Um, in the, the discussions that I've had with the, the boys over at Corsair, we've had no talk of uh, the radiator changing. And if we pull uh, an old H100 in, I certainly can't see you know, any changes there. All the fins and everything look the same to me. But yeah, there we go. Just, so, just to kind of point out blatant differences with the two, obviously you can see the Corsair H100, we've got the button over here that you have to turn up, you've not got it on this. The H100 has got a link, but a link switch in there, uh, but it's not with this one. You've got the link switch and you've got the, the dedicated out. So with the link connection here, if you were to run it on its own, you then need the, the little dongle. But with this, you don't need the dongle. It goes straight down to the USB. Um, this obviously can uh, fit four fans uh, out the box. This one uh, could do, but you've got PWM on uh, one side and then you've got normal, oh no, they are all four pin. They are all PWMs at the top. And there are slight, the uh, mounting uh, is slightly different. This one's on the top. This one is kind of on the side. So this one's kind of on the side and this one's on the top. I've got to admit, I do like the uh, glossier look to the top of this and the pump, I would also go as far as to say, is slightly more lower profile. This definitely seems to be a lot less of the pump. Maybe this is just like a big shroud or something, but I guess the way they've done it is because of the way it mounts. And if I grab the uh, mount for you, you can see with this, there's the mount. You just slide it over the top. There we go. But something I will say, and obviously it's a, it's a TTL thing. We always end up talking about random stuff like this. If you've uh, got your rig and you're customising it, bit of sandpaper over this, you will need uh, some decent primer, I would have thought. I can't see what the material's made out of, but you will need to give it a good scratch off, some decent primer, and then you could paint this to match certain parts of your rig. So, you know, red, white, it wouldn't really matter. So there's, a, there's an easy kind of customization touch there that you could do with that. So we've got that out of the way. Now I did say to you, I'll move these out of the way altogether. I did say to you, I would talk to you about the fans. In fact, I'll stop the video and I'll come back. Right, so we're back. It would have taken me forever and I was just about to trip over the microphone cable anyway. So we'll do it this way. So this is the uh, fans that now come with the H100 and they do look very similar to the uh, Corsair SP120s. Now they're award winning, they're great. I actually really like the quiet editions because um, they do still move a, a good amount of air. They work great on radiators, uh, water cooling radiators. So the H100 is a water cooling radiator, so it's pretty much one and the same thing. Um, and like I said, I always use the quiet ones. So what's the difference between this and this? So we've got the two side by side. So first things first, is the plastic detachable ring. This one hasn't got one, it's just a normal full frame one. Obviously this one you can change it to three different colours which come uh, in the packs and you get blue, red and white. Clip in, there we go. So you don't get the, uh, you don't get the rings, I've not pushed that in properly. Where's the other one? There we go. You do have to make sure you push all the outsides in. Uh, so we've got that the ring which is a it's a nice aesthetic touch but the other thing to kind of look at is these rubber bits in the side they act like little dampers you get a little bit of rubber poke out the top a little bit of rubber poke out the bottom um, and then you've got the rubber on the inside as well now this hasn't got it it's just an open frame so it's basically a cheaper version but the performance actually varies as well this one actually spins the fastest out of the lot because we've got the, we'll say we've got quiet edition, then we've got performance edition. In fact, I'll grab another fan so we can kind of make this a little bit more visual. So what we will do is we'll say the one on this side is the quiet edition. Then we'll say this one is the performance edition 
and this is the Corsair H100 edition. So, Corsair H100 edition spins up to 2700 RPM, but don't forget you will be able to control that in the Corsair Link software. Um, but the most important thing, because it's an SP, which is static pressure, you measure the static pressure and what they uh, the way it's kind of denoted is what I call, it, it's MM, and I always say millimetres. So we'll call it millimetres because I don't know the proper terminology, but we'll say millimetres. So you know what I'm on about, you know the MM that I'm talking about. It's 4MM slash H2O. So we'll say 4 millimetres. And then when we go down to the performance edition, that's 3.1 millimetres and 2007, sorry, 2350 RPM. So this one spins 350 RPM slower. Uh, go down to the quiet edition, which is the one I prefer, and uh, it's 1.29 millimeter slash H2O, and it's 1450 RPM. So there's, it's 900 RPM slower. But what you need to remember is these are their maximum speeds, and you can still spin them back slower still. So this one spins the fastest, creates the most static pressure. I've not tested it for noise yet, but we will do. And you've got the one in the middle, which is the performance edition, is actually, um, it's not mega insanely loud, but it's not quiet either. And then you've got the quiet edition. I can happily run these on 12 volts, but then you can still turn them back even lower for those points when, you know, you're not really doing anything with your rig. And then you pretty much have to put your ear up against them to even, you know, if you couldn't see, you'd have to put your ear up against it to be able to hear it. So they're the three, so they're, this is the quickest, and it does perform real well with that uh, extra bit of static pressure there, but essentially, other than that, they're pretty much basically the same fans. I'm, I'm almost positive that the blade design um, in, the, in the actual kind of like the, the main blade that spins, I'm almost certain that that's exactly the same. It's only kind of motor changes in the back that are any different. I certainly can't see any differences, you know, major differences with the frame design or anything like that. So it, I think it must just be motor changes. And with those motor changes, it's probably the point when the fan starts and then the fastest it can spin at 12 volts that they vary it with. But really now, we've had quite a long chat and we've not really done anything yet. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out the uh, heat sink test rig, which hasn't been used for some time. Get the H100 fitted. You don't need me to tell you how to do it. I'm sure if you're looking at this type of thing, you're going to be more than capable. It's just as easy as the old one. Um, so we're going to get it fitted and then we're going to get it tested. And we're going to do it the old school way, the way we always have done with a 1366 rig, 4 gigahertz, 4.2 gigahertz, 4.4 gigahertz, 1.25 volts, 1.35 volts, 1.45 volts. And we'll see how good this little puppy really is. Right then peeps, another really nice unique feature of the uh, H100i is if you go into the system section, you double click on the LED section and you can see over here we've got um, normal cycling and temperature. You can have the, uh, you can manually set, if you click it on temperature you can manually set it to go from blue to green to red depending on the temperature so you can set that and you can also set the colour that you want it to be. You can set the temperature you want it to change at, lovely jubbly. You can set it to cycling and it will just go through the, whatever the colours that you want to choose or normal where you can actually choose the colour itself and it's uh, like a normal colour palette so right at the top it's white. If you put them all at the bottom it will go off altogether and that's an easy way for you to disable it should you want to. Um, but then you can have right at the top is red for the red one can move the middle one right to the top for green and then you can move the blue one right to the top for just blue but you can mix them as well so if, if you wanted to put them both in roughly the middle it goes a kind of a purpley kind of almost grey kind of weird colour but you've got the colour palette to the right hand side so if you add more blue in you can see it starts to change but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back to white and I'm actually going to show you it changing because I've waited until it's got really dark so I can show you inside the rig now we've got green lights inside the rig anyway because of the motherboard that we're using but I'm just going to stop the camera quickly and uh, move the camera right then peeps so we're on a bit of an angle there 
Now I have to admit the white has got an ever so slight tinge of blue to it to look at it with the naked eye. To me, I am a bit of a colour freak because of the, my days at the body shop, but that to me is, uh, has got a little bit of blue in it. Don't know whether the camera will pick it up, but anyway. Now I'm going to move all the colours down quickly, just so I can show you it go off. Oh, let me grab, there we go, right, so I've turned it off altogether now. So I'm going to go, uh, we'll do blue first, so I'm going to take the right hand side one right the way up to the top to do blue. And there's blue, hopefully the, the like I said, the camera will pick the colours up okay. Right the way back down again, go back to off. Right the way up with the middle one. It will catch up eventually. There's green. Back down again for off, and then we'll go all the way back up again. Oh yeah, let me click it. And there's red. <laughs> Sorry, it's where I keep moving the mouse. There we go. There's red. It's a really nice deep red as well. I do hope the camera picks it up properly. Uh, for colours in between, if I bring the uh, blue up, it goes like a purpley pinky colour. See if we can make it really pink. There you are, that's quite a hot pink there. Take the red out. It goes a more purpley colour. Blue and green, those two, it, that's with blue right at the top and green right at the top. Now, the thing is with this is you can infinitely tune it. So obviously if I was going to use it in this rig because of the other green lights, I would run it green. But at the same time, on the rampage, the red would look amazing. So it just hands the choice back to the customer and this is something I've been asking for for such a long time with a lot of other products that we actually get the choice to tune it into our system and do what we want with it. RGBs really aren't that expensive or hard to set up or anything like that now so this really is a really good move for Corsair and I see a lot of people really liking this and yes okay to start off with you're going to get a little bit um, uh, f you know, not, I'm not going to say fed up with it, but the novelty will wear off. But if you were to change the system or want to change the colours, the option is there. And the one thing I have forgotten is the fact that you can set it to pulse, where it will turn itself off and then it will slowly come back on again. So let me do that with white. Right, it's just fading out there, that's actually blue. But you can see it fade back up again. I did say I was going to put it in white, didn't I? <laughs> Never mind. And it will eventually, it's just starting to fade out again now. And there you go, that's the pulse feature. But it's now time for us to crack on and move on with our testing. <clears throat> right then peeps, it's been a while since we've done a heat sink review on camera. So just to kind of remind some of the new people, I am still gonna be using the i7-950. You may think that's slightly old now, but they are capable of putting an immense amount of heat. And unlike with the stuff with Ivy Bridge where you got crappy IHS compounds and stuff like that, these create the the cores create the heat and it's it's not such a it's quite a tapered you know a way of it um, the temperatures going up and what we do is we run uh, the i5 the i7 950 uh, 200 times 20 remember the days when we could change the base clock so much oh I miss those days anyway so we're doing 200 times 20 for 4 gigahertz at 1.25 volts I do need to turn the load line calibration on actually um, so before I start the test I will do that. 
Uh, and then we do 200 times 22 at 1.35 volts for 4.2 gigahertz. And then we do 200 times, uh, I do apologize. See, it's been such a long time since I've done this. We do 200 times 20 for four gigahertz. We do 200 times 21 for 4.2 gigahertz. And then we do 200 times 22 for 4.4 gigahertz. 1.25 volts, 1.35 volts, 1.45 volts. That's it. And uh, the 1.45 volts, that's a massively, properly, properly extreme test. Only very few coolers have ever passed that. And if you go to the main review link underneath, you'll see that the, the 4.4 gigahertz um, uh, graph is tiny, absolutely tiny. Not many do post it. But anyway, at the moment, if you go into system and you double click one of the fans, brings a thing over on the right hand side. So we're over that side of the screen. Like, woo. Um, H100 fan one, device type fan, H100 temp one, because that's the group that it's in. And then if you go to this drop down box, you'll see lots of uh, boxes that you can select. And these are preset fan profiles. You've got quiet, balanced, performance, custom, fixed RPM, fixed percentage, maximum, and then default. The fixed percentage and fixed RPM, you've literally got a thing that you can put up and down so you can set them manually. Custom is so that you can change a graph like this yourself and then you've obviously got quiet, balanced performance and then maximum. But what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, test on balanced, performance and then maximum. So all out, balls out, see what it is you know, capable of. But just to show you the... Uh, speeds now another annoying thing you can see out over here fan one has started to spin up but you have to change them both manually so you can see that dial now starting to go up it will eventually settle it's about 2500 rpm <clears throat> the fans technically are capable of 27 uh, apparently but anyway so you can hear in the background that it's it's not quiet I have to say, those fans are probably still quieter than the original H100 fans at Maxi Chat. But those fans um, do perform better than the original H100 fans as well. But like I said, what we're going to do, we're going to test. Do the first test at balance. And we'll do all of the tests consecutively. We'll do... Um, uh, 30 minutes of OCCT and what we're going to do is we've got it on Linpack mode, AVX capable Linpack, 90% available memory, there's 12 gigabyte in there, um, and we'll run it for 30 minutes and we've got a countdown timer, well we've got, sorry, a, a build up timer on the right hand side over here, so we can actually, we'll have a, a, a live timer running as well. So we'll do 30 minutes of um, balanced, We'll take our results, put the camera on, show you guys, let it idle again for a bit, then we'll do 30 minutes of performance and then 30 minutes of maximum. So you can see there, straight away, just those tests alone, it's going to take me an hour and a half. But then we have to turn the, the uh, clock up to 4.2 gigahertz, run them all again. Then we have to turn it up to 4.4 gigahertz and then run all those again as well. So I'm going to be here all night. So without further ado, we've got it unbalanced. We've got a hardware monitor running over here la 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 over there so what we're going to do it is quite warm in this room as well we've got 22.2 degrees in the room at the moment for the ambient temp but well it's bound to go up in a bit when we start running this beastie uh, so i'm just going to go click and then we let We let that tick around over and do its job. So I'm not going to bore you. I will bring you back in about 30 minutes. Right then, peeps. We're at the end of the uh, first test. Balanced. Uh, 4 gigahertz. 1.25 volts. 200 times 20. You can actually see here. 42 minutes and 5 seconds. The test is still running. If you have a look. Uh, a hardware monitor, go to the max, you can see we've got 72, 70, 69, 68, that is where I took my results from. But we have a whole selection of other results down here actually as well. Now uh, the monitoring in OCCT 
has got the uh, maximum uh, temperatures slightly different. They're actually a little bit lower, but I'm going to be going with hardware monitor because hardware monitor is what I always use before, so it keeps things fair. So I'll use OCCT to be able to you know, make sure that we've got it all maxed out and the amount of memory and the actual load in itself, but we are using a hardware monitor for our temperature results because, like I said, that's what I've always used. So the temperatures we had were 72, 70, 69, 68. That gave us an average temperature of 69.75. If we remove, you're not going to be able to see it. Oh, just 21.7. That's our ambient temperature in the room. If we remove that, that gives us a delta temperature of 48.05. But what I'm going to do now is we're going to stop. that well we don't need to delete it we'll just close it we'll stop that we're going to go straight into balanced and we're going to turn that up to performance so we've turned it up to performance we're going to let that idle for a little bit and then we're going to restart the tests so i will be back after i've run these tests again Hey peeps, moving on to the performance results, still on 4 gigahertz as before. I whiz through it so that we're not here for too long though. You can see at the top here that we've had it running for 34 minutes. Now, the results I got were 71, 67, 68, 66. Ambient temperature, I'm not going to turn the light oh, on. Turn the light on. Ta -da! Where is it? There we go. You can see it. I know you can see it. Just because I can't see you seeing it. Anyway. Uh, it's 21, well it says 21.8 since I've picked it up, but it's, I took my results 21.7. So, ahem, uh, 71, 67, 68, 66. That gave us an average temperature of 68. Uh, minus the 21.7 degrees ambient temperature, that gives us a delta temperature of 46.3. So about a 9 degrees drop uh, from going from balanced to performance. But what I'm going to do now is restart everything because now I need to bang the old girl up to uh, maximum. So she's going to make plenty of noise, but we need to get that done and then uh, I'm going to retest again. So don't forget, I've done an hour's worth of testing already. No half ass measures here. No quick looks. Um, we're going to be testing properly. We're going to be testing thoroughly. And uh, yeah, so we've not even moved our overclock up yet. And we're still, um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to shut up and I'm going to crack on with this. By well then, peeps, we have done the last of the four gigahertz tests. We got uh, 70, 67, 67, 66. That gives us an average temperature of 67.5. You can see we've been running for like 30 minutes here. Uh, minus the 21.9 degrees ambient temperature. It's gone up a little bit. That gives us a, a delta temperature of 45.6. So we've lost uh, another roughly uh, 0.7 degrees off again by turning the fans up. But obviously they are quite loud at the moment. What I'm going to do now is bump the overclock up to 4.2 gigahertz at 1.35 volts which cranks the heat up that little bit more and we will run all of the tests again thank god for dominoes and sugary biscuits and uh, dr pepper because that's all i'm running on right then peepolers have a look down this side of the screen look 1.3 to 8 volts, 1.35 uh, in the BIOS, but with a little bit of V-droop. 4.2 gigahertz times 21, um, oh, sorry, 200 base clock times 21 for 4.2 gig. We've done all the tests again, as you can see up here. Just over 30 minutes running. Now, the temperatures I got were 81, 78, 78, 76. Don't forget this is at balanced in um, in the uh, fan settings so yeah 81 78 78 76 that gives us 78.25 degrees as a uh, average temperature 
The ambient room temperature at the moment is 22.3. Take that away, that gives us a 55. 0.95 degree delta temperature which is obviously the warmest one we've had yet but we're on a completely new test and what I'm going to do is now turn the fan speed up to performance and I'm going to let it, the, the rig idle for a bit and then uh, I'll restart the test and in about 40 minutes time, 45 minutes time, whatever, after it's idled for a bit and all the temperatures are stabilised again, I'm going to retest for another 30 minutes and I will be back to show you the results then. Right then peeps, onto the 4.2 gigahertz test at 1.35 volts. You can see up here, it has been running for over 40 minutes now. But the results I got with a 22.5 degrees ambient temperature are 80, 77, 76, 75. That gives us an average temperature across the four cores of 77. Take the ambient temperature away, which is 22.5. That gives us a 54.5 degrees delta. That means you've lost about a degree and a half by turning the fans up that notch from uh, quiet to performance. So obviously as you are adding more heat in, being able to take more heat away if that makes any sense whereas when the CPU was cooler before even the quiet fans were doing relatively well with the temperatures but anyway what we're going to do that's the same as before I'm now going to smash the um, the fan up to maximum Anyway, once, they're, uh, once they've all wound themselves up, I'm going to stop the test. Let it idle for a bit. But anyway, I will be back shortly with some more results for you. Right then, peeps. As you can see, we've been running for about 35 minutes now. We're on the super duper maxed out in the... There we go. 2500 RPM. Maximum fan speed. And the temperatures I got are 79, 76, 75, 75. That's 76.25 across uh, an average of the cores. If you reduce, if you reduce, if you remove the 22.4 degrees ambient temperature, that gives us a 53.85 degrees delta temperature. So we've lost there roughly, and I do say roughly, about uh, 0.6 of a degree. Now the final test is 4.4 gigahertz. Looking at these scores, I think it's going to uh, go through them. I'm not so sure about the uh, balance test, but only time will tell. So I'm going to get everything ready now, and uh, I will be back shortly with some results for you. Right then, peeps, just so you know, as I feared, I've had to uh, stop the test for the um, uh, the balanced results at 4.4 gigahertz, 1.45 volts. It's a hell of a lot of volts, especially on this chip. As you can see, 93 degrees, 91 degrees, 90 degrees, 87. We've got a cut-off point of 90. So once you get a couple of uh, um, uh, once we get two cores above that 90 degree threshold. That's when we cut it off. So as soon as uh, core 2 went to 91, that was it. And that's the way we do it with all of our tests as well. But I'm not surprised at that, considering it is only on balance. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to retest, but with the fan set to performance. Right then, peeps. First of the 4.4 gigahertz test finished. Obviously, at the performance settings, as I said before, the, uh, the first one that we did... The balance results, they uh, they went a little bit too high. But this one has just, and I do mean just, stayed within our um, tolerances. So we've got 91, 89, 86, 85. That gives us an average temperature of 87.75. 22.5 degrees ambient temperature. Take that off. That gives us 65.25. Now you need to remember that this is the, the performance setting. It's not maxed out. The H100 failed on the original 4.4 gigahertz test with the, the low settings fans uh, and got a little bit warmer than this uh, test as well. So performance is already better than the, the H100. What we're going to do now is, like I said, I'm going to kill this off so the fans can 
spin down a bit, let it ambient, let the ambient, um, let it idle. It's getting really late here. Anyways, so going to leave that on uh, maximum now. I'm pretty sure that those uh, fans may have been up on maxi chat already for that test, so we may not see a massive difference between the two. But anyway, we'll have to leave it and find out. But I will be back with some results for you, as far as you're concerned, very shortly. But it's uh, it's bloody late here now. Anyway, I'm going to crack on. Right then, peeps. So we've done the last of the tests. 4.4 gigahertz with the fans absolutely maxed out. Temperature of the room at the moment is 22.6 degrees. So I got 89, 85, 83, 82. That gives us an average temperature across all four cores of 84.75. Take away the 22.6 degrees ambient temperature and that gives us a, a delta temperature of 62.5 degrees. So that's all of our testing done and dusted. We've got through all nine results. It's now time for us to move on to a conclusion, chat a bit about uh, the difference between this and H100 temperatures and stuff like that. Do a nice big roundup and get it all finished. Right then peeps, the re results that I got with the H100i on the 1366 rig weren't as good as I was expecting um, and by that I mean uh, it's, I was expecting even just with the, um, the cold plate changes uh, I would have expected something a little bit more but especially with those new fans. So what I've done is I've switched um, over onto the 2011 rig. As you can see down here, it's actually a 3970X. We're on the Rampage 4, 4.6 gigahertz, 1.425 volts in the BIOS. Now, if we go over, you can see it's just kind of, you know, just a, chucked it together quickly. But that's the original H100 with the original H100 fans, and the fans are wired in uh, via 12 volts. Pump is turned up to maximum. I've done the same test as I did before. Uh, I've run uh, OCCT for 30 minutes, as you can see, and we've got the results down the right-hand side. Now, I got 86, 82, 78, 77, 82, 88, which gives us an average temperature across all six of the cores this time, not four, um, of 82.16. Now, the room temperature in the room at the moment is dead at 22 degrees. There you go, look, 22 degrees, the bottom one. So we've got 22 degrees ambient, take that off, it gives us a 60.16 degrees delta temperature. So what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to switch the H100i all back onto this rig, retest it again with those fans on 12 volt and everything as well, I'm not going to use the Corsair link, just to see uh, a direct comparison. So that means we've tested 1366, which was the old top end rig, and then we're now moving over to the top end uh, 2011 rig to really push this and see what you know if we can see any differences but anyway so right it's now time for me to take all this apart again and do it again right then peeps now this is a turn up for the books as you can see here 39 minutes you still got it running I left this one running I didn't turn it off but anyway scores down here 79 74 73 70 75 80 don't take the bottom one because that's a package temperature. You take that and then you divide all of them by six because there's six of them. That gives an average temperature of 75 degrees. It's 22.7 degrees in the room at the moment. And so we take that away from that score and then that gives us 52.3 degrees. Now just to remind you, the H100 was 60.16. This is 52.3. So you're looking at a rough, you know, real rough around score of about seven and a half degrees cooler the H100 is. Now, this now leaves me with no end of problems because you have seen the results that we've done previously and I am going to leave them in the video as well. It's just going to take me a little bit of time to try and work out what the bloody hell's going on. I've currently got the H100 back in the test rig, which if I spin you around, you can see the old H100 
has just gone into the test rig to try and work out what the bejesus is going on. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack on with my testing and I am going to uh, conclude all of, you know, put all of this in the conclusion. Unless I find something out, you know, like groundbreaking with the H100 in the old rig, I'm going to uh, leave this for the conclusion now. I think the video is going to be long enough as it is because we all know my conclusions are going to be enormous. But, uh, there we go, I'm going to turn the H100 rig on now. That's all set up for 12 volts. I do need to put the sides on and the roof back on. But anyway, it's time for me to do yet more testing. Right then, guys and girlies, you've made it to the conclusion. Uh, and as ever, I will tell you the award that I'm going to give it, and then I will give you the rather lengthy explanation why. And I'm going to give it the gold award. Now, the trolls are already going, no, could have told that already. But anyway, let's talk about all this. So, the 1366 stuff, always use that rig. The uh, H100i, because I've got it here on a 2011 rig at the moment, uh, admittedly, doesn't seem to uh, like it that much. Uh, we've not been able to work out why 100% not conclusively. Um, now I retested on the 2011 rig as you saw and then uh, the results were much 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 better. So then that led me to kind of go on and wanted to test the Z77 stuff and FM2 stuff as well. Got you know much the same results. Um, so most people would have just gone I'm not going to bother showing the 1366 stuff but us I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it in there. It could just be my sample specifically doesn't like it. It could just be they don't like it in general. We won't know until I've done some more testing. But after doing probably 10 hours worth of swapping, buggering about, doing this, doing that, trying this, trying that, all I've got to say is uh, it performs kind of on par with a normal H100 on my specific um, uh, 1366 system which in itself wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing because of all the extra things that the H100i does bring to the table. But when you do test it on the other stuff and you mix in uh, much better temperatures, when we tested the, um, the 2011 rig, which at 1.425 volts is a lot of volts and the temperatures kind of indicate that as well because even with the fans on 12 volts, it was struggling to push all the heat out of that. What is making me think now is I may just switch over to 2011, but then I'll need to do some massive roundups. I can do a load of coolers all at once, so I've got some graphs again. But anyway, um, we went from a 60.16 delta on the H100 with the fans blowing an absolute tornado over it, down to 52.3 with the H100i. Um, so you can see on that rig that there were huge temperature drops. Now, a lot of people have said, oh my God, the fans are noisy again, and at maxi chat, yes, they are noisy. But the, the thing that this really does bring to the table over the H100 is an ease of being able to turn them down again. With the H100, because you kept having to press that button and stuff, all I said to people, you know, long term was sod it, don't bother, just get some Molexes, use the fan speed reducers, and just smash it straight into your power supply, and don't really bother with that button, just make sure that's turned up to maximum so it looks pretty in your rig, and just kind of leave it. With the H100i, you've obviously not got that button, and it's all done via software, and it's really easy to change as well, and you can kind of change it compared to your mood, what you're doing with your rig. Say for argument's sake, um, you want to leave it on overnight, you could just smash it on quiet and or manually set it to even lower than quiet if you're really not that fussed about maybe your rig idling at like 50 or 60 degrees or something, which let's face it, the fact it's idling, it's a temperature that you really need to worry about, not of, you know what it's actually doing. So you could make it nigh on silent. Um, again, if you uh, say for argument's sake, you're doing, you know you're going to be doing some benchmarking or you've got a monster video to render that's going to take, or you're doing some Cinema 3D or something, that's going to take a couple of three hours to do maybe, stick it on performance. Yes, the fan speed's going to go up a little more, but then again, it really depends what you're going to use it for. Some of you gamers out there have always got your cans on your head and you, you can't hear anything but what's, you know, <laughs> in the background anyway or rather on your game anyway, so it doesn't matter whether you've got, you know, 200 CFM fans in your rig. But the thing is, is it does give you that choice. 
really easy choice in the software as well. Uh, the fact that you can also connect your power supply up into the side of the pump so you can get all of your kind of your temperatures, your voltages and all that kind of stuff, it's a really good thing. And if you were to go ahead and buy the Corsair Link Commander, which is like a central all-in-one station, you can control all of your system fan speeds. The only thing I will say though, is adding all these extra things in does mean extra cables. So you need to kind of try and, you know, not go too nuts with it. I prefer to have things looking, you know, a, a little bit, you know, not too messy. It's got to be quite tidy, but it really depends where you want to go with it. It could end up being slightly tidier than a fan speed controller with, you know, 20 million wires all over the place and stuff. The thing that I do like though, is uh, the, the LED, or rather I should say RGB, and the fact that you can control it. You can turn it off if you want, you can manually set the color you want. There's, you know, bloody loads of different color variations there. Um, so with that, it's one of the things that I said before with the, uh, the ROG gaming card that we did, the Matrix, the fact that you could only have the color that it wanted to give you. They could have done the same with this. They could have had it just temperature controlled. Started from, I don't know, like green or something, or blue. Then went into green, then went up into red. But you can actually manually set it to be whatever you want. Or you can even manually set the colours as well. So you can have it back to front. You can have it starting on red and ending up blue. They've given you loads and loads of little options like that. Now, with the SP120 fans, uh, I originally thought what we were going to end up with was fans that are, oh sorry, the fans that come with the H100, very, very similar to the SP120s. I personally thought we were gonna have something that sat in between the uh, quiet edition and the performance edition. That would have made sense to me. But these fans seem to be able to run quicker than even the performance fans and push out more air as well. But the confusing thing is, is they not only can go quicker, but they can run a massive amount slower as well. Uh, and by that, I mean they can go down to near enough, I think it's uh, 900 RPM or something. Um, so if, as with the special tech deal, that obviously the link's going to be underneath. Really what you're getting is you, you can have fans that will spin up. But with these fans, what you're losing is the, the rubber dampers, so that they can make things slightly quieter, and the customizable rings. Now, with the customizable rings, I really like those because with the... the uh, with the Corsair fan series in general, they do the, the Air series and the SP static pressure series. So you can have the same looking fans with those rings throughout the whole of your rig. So I think Corsair have missed out on a bit of a trick not putting them on these as well. Um, but then again, it may be so that they're going to send, make people go out and you know buy more of the fans. If I was to get the H100 personally, as with the kit underneath, as you can see, I would still put some SP120s on there and yeah, just you know tune between the two. Set up a couple of custom fan profiles, so you've got one that runs at 100%, and then set up a percentage profile so that you've got one that runs at I don't know 70% or something. So you, you can tune the, them that way. I. I can't sit on my bench rig, fair enough, I may end up using uh, like the, the, the normal SP fans because noise isn't really going to be an issue, but if it was me using it in my own personal rig that I was going to sit beside or game beside, I would definitely still go for those quieter fans and just tune it accordingly. If you want to be tight, if you're a bit, I was going to get, um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, religiously um, racist then, but I'm not going to, it's just the terminology that I would use, but I'm not going to use it. Anyway. Skip past that. If, you, uh, if you're tight with your money, uh, yes, you could use the SP fans that come in the pack, but obviously you're not going to get those nice rings um, and you're always going to have to be running them so that they're you know, not really spinning that much and stuff. I have a funny feeling, although I can't confirm it until I do even more testing, I do have a funny feeling that the, uh, the SP Quiet Editions will probably end up being better at lower speeds than these ones. Um, but I really don't know that until we start to, you know, get really properly in depth with the testing. I may get round to it at a later date, maybe match them RPM for RPM and see what sort of um, uh, temperatures and stuff we end up getting. But like I said, that will be, it's been an, an hard enough job to get this one done. So the long and short of it is, I do really like it. I really, really like it as well. Uh, the, the main thing for me that, that I, I probably don't like is A, the fact that you don't get those rings on the fans. I do think they've missed a trick there. And the hose, although uh, I understand the fact it's thicker hose and stuff like that, the fact that they've gone over to rubber, um, I'm not so sure about. It took me a while to get used to the, the, like the corrugated plastic ones from the original H100. And I think I've just got used to those. And these are just 
um, a bit of a shock to the system. It kind of reminds me of the, some of the other brands that have tried bringing these out and they've not really been that great. So I think it may be just the fact that I'm kind of latching onto that fact rather than the fact that I don't really like them. It's just the fact that it's instantly making me think of another brand. But anyway, if you did manage to sit through the whole of the review, congratulations. As I've said before, I could have taken a lot of the, the testing away, but I wanted to kind of share and show you sometimes the amount of work that we have to put in for this stuff. I mean, the testing on the three overclocks and the three different fan settings, that's nine sets of tests alone. Just the, um, um, the amount of time to put into that is four and a half hours if we run them back to back. That's without all of the, the idle times and you know changing kit over and all the you know asking about that I've had to do uh, in between. And as I've said, rather than take those mm, iffy 1366 results away, I have left them there anyway. Um, I've got a funny feeling it may be some kind of weird config issue <clears throat> with this system. Sometimes you can get the, uh, the, the mount on the back of the CPU around the wrong way. I've double checked everything with this. It's all on 100%, but it, like I said, it's gonna take a little bit of uh, getting used to, especially the fact that we've put, on here now, we've put the original H100 in to double check the temperatures, and they are within kind of 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a degree what they were when we tested it months back. So I've not quite got my head what's going on. But anyway, not gonna rabble on anymore. Do I like the H100? Yes, I do. Uh, the H100i, sorry, yes I do. A lot of people are gonna have the H100 and want to know should they buy the H100i. Really guys, the performance side of things, it is a bit of a billy bonus, but the, really the, the, what, what it will come down to with most people is not the fact that you can turn the fans right up, not the fact that you can turn the fans right down. I think the, the majority of people, if they do decide to change, will be the fact that you can uh, change the LED on it and the, the simple and only other reason would be that that software. So you maybe one day you have got that opportunity where you can just go in for a flick of a switch, not have to open your case, not have to change any fan speed reducer cables or anything like that. You can change the fan speeds. That being said though, I still probably would run it on the quiet so just go from silly quiet to full speed on the quiet editions. But anyway, Fairly complex review, fairly complex conclusion, still 100% worth a gold award. Even if I'd tested it, uh, and just done the review on the 1366 results, I would have given it the gold award just because of that LED and the, the software link up thing where it does give you the opportunity to easily be able to change those fan speeds. The fact that it comes in at the same sort of money that H100 was or still is at some shops, it's just a complete no brainer now. If, if you're in the market to uh, buy a new unit now, yes, you should be uh, getting the H100i. If you've got a H100, the reasons why you need to be asking yourself, should I be upgrading, would be, do I want those RGBs or do I want the easy software fan changes? Would that benefit me enough into uh, spending some more money on a H100? Something that you do need to kind of uh, bear in mind though is if you buy a H100i, you can still get rid of your old one and get a few quid back anyway. I'm sure it'd still get reasonable money on eBay. But anyway, I really do need to go and sit in a darkened room now and try and get my um, uh, my all my, my zen and all that kind of like <laughs> aligned again because I'm completely frazzled. Thank God it's the weekend. Anyway, it's time for me now to go and chuck some weights around the gym and try and get rid of some of this aggression and stress that I've built up. Um, <laughs> All I can think about now is people going, it's just going to go and fap. Anyway, it's time, for me. <laughs> it's time for me to bugger off. This is Tiny Tom Logan with another one of his trademark lengthy reviews. Uh, am I going to finish it now? I've already said reviews. Sod it. Out. <laughs>